everybody. Well, today I'm feeling very nostalgic, and by the end of this video, I, I think you'll see why. This will be my third winter in the Quartzsite Ehrenberg area. It was two years ago around this time that I arrived for the first time in Quartzsite, and we came here straight from Sedona, which is just beautiful. I couldn't figure out why everybody was so attracted to this desert. And my friend Kendall said, just wait, it'll grow on you and you're gonna love it and it'll come to feel like home. And she was right. And I'm gonna show you around my camp today and let you see why I'm feeling nostalgic and a little bit sad. Because this year it's just me camped here and that's okay because I've learned that I love my alone time and it's good for me. And right now I really need it. And I'm gonna explain all of that in the video. But for now, let me show you where everybody was last year and where I am. So this is my camp this year. And I have the place all to myself so far. I'm really enjoying that. I was camped down this road with my friends Sue Ann and VJ that introduced me to foods that you could eat in your vehicle without refrigeration. Wow, that just seems like such a long time ago. Thank you guys. Also further down this road, Cherie held a jewelry making class and it was my first time to attend any kind of class like that after my brain injury. And so I wasn't sure how I would do. And sure enough, it was difficult, but Cherie was so kind. She let me stay after everybody else left and she worked with me for probably another hour until I could finish my bracelet. Just love people like that that are out here. Thank you guys. Across the way over here was where my friends Jamie and Kendall were parked. And Kendall actually did my hair just beyond those Sararos, if you can see that little field. After VJ left, Sue Ann and I moved into this little parking area here. And it worked out just great. And up there was more people. Up at the top was Roger and Cindy and Lou and Al. And over here is where my friend Bryce parked and I had my first breakfast in the desert, like a major cookout. And we had Thanksgiving here. It's also where I met his friends Fred and Colvin and later Michael. And you're gonna see pictures of all these people at the end of this video. But at this moment, I just wanna say happy Veterans Day to everybody. Veterans Day is tomorrow and I know Bryce is a veteran as was my stepdad i'm thanking all veterans today for their service so going on around from where sue ann and i were parked down this road was also uh, of course bob and my friend judy and i met gloria and just a whole bunch of people so yeah i'm feeling nostalgic today even though i enjoy being alone and i need the solitude right now so why am I feeling nostalgic and a little sad and all of that that goes with camping here after three years, three, I keep saying years, it's only been two years, but this is my third winter. Does that make sense? Anyway, I, I find myself when I pulled in here, I am grieving a lot of loss right now. I'm grieving, of course, the loss of my fur babies and I, uh, I used to walk them down these washes and this desert was the first desert we went trekking across and found a big quartz pile. Uh, the mountains around here is the first time that I, I took me and my fur babies on an adventure by ourselves. And so there's just a, a, a lot of remembering them while I'm here and of course I do every day it's difficult to be without them and i'll save talking about them and another fur baby for another video but i'm grieving the loss of them i'm grieving the loss of friends and that i even ones that i had out here some of the ones that i will show you pictures of at the end of this video are either uh, not on the road or ha uh, have even passed on and so I'm grieving a lot of what used to be. Those were some just some great times. I'm grieving a lot of what might have been. And 
and I'm grieving what I had hoped for when I came out here because it just seems so totally different. But I'm also celebrating the friends that I've made and the family, the wonderful family that has hung tight with me through all of this. And I'm celebrating the life that I've been given out here. So needless to say, it's just a, a whirlwind uh, of emotions right now. And it reminds me of a friend of mine told me today, thank you, David, that he recently went on a mountain drive, just a beautiful drive, and he did it one day and then the next day uh, to go to the, uh, uh, an event that was being held up there. And the first day he was full of anxiety and running late and, and stressed and just didn't really notice the beautiful views and, and the highway itself and the roads and, and, and everything that each turn gave him. And then the next day when he went and wasn't feeling those things, it was just a completely different drive. Same exact road, same vehicle, same person, same event, but his mindset was different. And that's what I hope to accomplish while I'm here. In all things, we can always choose to focus on the, the positive and what might be next what's around that corner what what's coming up that's going to be positive what what is the universe going to give us and I uh, I have regrets about not spending more time alone with my dogs in these last two years that I was out here and I am going to take this opportunity now to stop and be aware of everything around me, in me, all that's going on, and, and just be present. And I'm going to allow the grieving. I keep running from it, and I know from experience that's never good. And I'm also going to take this time while I'm camped here to, to look ahead and, and anticipate the beauty that's going to be coming up. Because it's always a matter of, of perspective, whether it's a regret or an opportunity. And I'm seeing this time as an opportunity. What's next? I have no idea. I'm just going to sit for a while in the stillness and in the silence and I'm going to reconnect with spirit on a deeper level and let my inner guides and light illumine for me what's next on my path. This may not be making any sense to anyone but me, but I've gone through some tragedies and and some changes and it, I just think we go through life so busy even out here just busy 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 doing and we don't take time to just stop it feels like it's been a little crazy since I've been on the road between the learning curves new people places things the losses that I just described, learning who I am and how to function with my TBI constraints and, and just and also realizing who I want to be and realizing who I'm not. I thought this video was going to be about telling you about my future plans, as a matter of fact. And I had one queued up and ready to go today, and I took it down before it aired. I thought I had the next year or so all mapped out. But if I've learned anything, especially in dealing with my TBI, that this journey of life that we're on, this road, our paths that each of us is on, it changes in a heartbeat. And it really just boils down to seconds and inches. So I thought that I had it all mapped out in a plan and was going to be presenting that to you. And instead, I'm here to tell you that I'm just getting off the merry-go-round and regrouping. I'm going to go within and reassess. And I'll be honest, I've also had some cognitive shifts. And I'm a little bit scared. You know, it's like I'm, I'm full of regrets today. I'm full of sorrow and grieving. And I'm also full of hope and anxious for the future and looking forward to the future. And I'm also scared and I'm also determined to face it with courage. How crazy does that sound? Does anybody else identify with that at all? Anyway, I don't know where it will all lead. I'm taking it one day at a time, sometimes minute by minute. And um, I won't be able to stay at the RTR. I know that. It's just going to be too many people. And I'm really sad about that, too, because, I, like I said, I had all these friends here last year. And we did Thanksgiving dinner and hung out. And I can't, I can't seem to do that 
it anymore. It's too much um, stimulus for me. And also, I, I'm not ready to be around all the dogs and see everybody with their dogs. And I know that makes me sound self-centered when I could go around and be loving on the dogs. And, and I'll get there. I'm just, I'm just not there yet. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. So, um, I am going to be, like I've told you guys before, at Rice Ranch from December 12th through the 19th. That's going to be a smaller environment. I want any of my viewers in the area and my friends that can come there, whether you just come for a couple of hours, a couple of days, or all week, it, it doesn't matter. I'm setting aside time that week, and I will hopefully have a lot of this processed and be able to be present and get to connect with everybody. I may have spoken too soon, committing Robert to the entire week. Uh, Robert and I aren't camped together right now, and uh, but he will be there for some part of it. And uh, But he has a lot of work to do. That man works 50, 60 hours a week. So I'm going to let him address that on his channel and look him up on YouTube if you don't already know him. But he will be there, and I'll let him talk to his viewers about that. But for me, it's a chance to, like I said, to meet viewers, to see old friends, friends, make new friends, and connect in a smaller, quiet environment, and do some fun things. I got to know a lot of the vendors and a lot of the locals last year, and I look forward to sharing that with everybody. We'll sit around and we'll visit a lot. We'll have Q&A going back and forth, and we'll uh, share resources, and but mostly we'll connect. And it's the only way I'm going to be able to do it, because I know I won't be able to cr handle the crowds at the RTR. I might go to some of the classes or show up for a little bit but um, I, I'll just have to play that by ear like I said right now I'm taking everything minute by minute and day to day so even though there are a lot of changes in my life and I'm, I'm grieving and have hope at the same time I'm gonna lay low and be so low for right now and give myself some compassion and self-care and love and extend the love to everybody that I can I know I'll be running into people when I go into town and I'm looking forward to as time goes by more and more people get here seeing some of my old friends but for now I think introspection and prayer and meditation are in order. Of course, I don't know what tomorrow holds. Of course, none of us do. But I trust in spirit and I trust in the flow of positive energy in this universe. And I know that what, what is mine to do will come up. And in the meantime, as I get ready to move forward, I'm a little bit behind on my NaNoWriMo writings, but I am getting able to do that. And I will be caught up probably by about the middle of this month and on track and so I'm really excited about that. I'm going to of course maintain this YouTube channel but other than that like I said it's going to be what most of the world would consider doing nothing. Healing, resting, recuperating, respite, prayer, meditation, reconnecting with spirit. When I spoke with my friend David earlier this morning he gave me a great quote between Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and I'm gonna close with that and then stick around to see the pictures of some of the people that I just told you about but here's the quote from Christopher Robin Christopher Robin says what I like doing best is nothing how do you do nothing asked Pooh after he had wondered for a long time well it's when people call out at you just as you're going off to do it what are you going to do Christopher Robin and you say, oh, nothing, and then you go and do it. Christopher Robin continues, it means just going along, listening to all the things you can't hear, and not bothering. I just love that. I'm going to repeat his last line. It means just going along, listening to all the things you can't hear, and not bothering that's so awesome so here are my friends that I introduced you to at the beginning of the video and we'll see you down the road everybody